afternoon for uh, uh, attending, spending your afternoon with us in our SIM 2021 postgrad fair. So this session is about our graduate certificate and diploma programs awarded by Singapore Institute of Management. I'm Clara, your host for this session. Um, the ground rule, please mute yourself during the presentation for any inquiries. You can either type in the chat or ask during the Q&A session at the end of the sharing session. I'll be covering admission criteria, progression, and the program structure. And the relevant head of programs from the academic department will be sharing the unique details for the SIM graduate diploma, respectively. In SIM, we offer graduate certificate and diploma in business analytics, graduate diploma in digital marketing, and graduate diploma in human resource management. There are two aspects for the admission criteria that is the academic and the English requirement. So a degree holder from a recognized university or a diploma holders who are 30 years old with eight years working experience meets the admission criteria. As long as the medium of instruction for your qualification is obtained in English, you meet the second admission criteria as well. So for our SIM graduate diploma holders, they can progress to the master program awarded by University of Warwick. And these programs are actually conducted in SIM campus. There are three trimesters for each program. Each trimester is four months, namely January, May, and September. Two modules are conducted in one trimester. So altogether, uh, graduate diploma students will be taking six modules in 12 months. The total cost fees is 5,778. And for graduate certificate students, you will be taking one modules per term, complete three modules in 12 months, and the total cost fees would be 2889. After your completion of the grad cert, you can choose to progress to graduate diploma in business analytics or digital marketing, completing an additional three modules in the following year. Classes are mainly conducted on Mondays and Wednesday or Thursday from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. There are no classes on Fridays or Saturday. Each module has 13 lessons conducted in 12 weeks. Example, Monday is module one and Wednesday is module two. But in two weeks time, I mean in, in two weeks, you'll be having two class, uh, three classes per week. Yeah, so all modules are conducted by local lecturers. There are two continued assessment and one midterm test or examination for each module. We spread out the assignment, test and examination. So technically, you will be having um, assessment every month. The midterm test is 40% of the total marks, while the examination account for 60% of the total marks. Midterm test will be conducted on Fridays in week seven or week eight. That is about the second month of your studies. And the test will normally, it is a two hours test or examination. It will be conducted at night as well. Yeah, to fit your working schedule. Students who obtain 50% of the total mark will pass the module and completing all six modules will successfully complete the graduate diploma program or three modules for the graduate certificate program. Students who fail the modules can retake the modules in the next available term. However, if they fail the same modules for two times, they will be terminated. Students who inform or provide supporting documents, let's say medical certificate or work commitment letters or email, then they will be able to take the supplementary test or examination. There is no attendance requirement for this program. However, we do encourage all the students to attend all the classes if possible, because all the concepts, the tested knowledge, the experience will be shared during the lesson. And if you have any doubts, you can clarify during the class. Students who can't attend the classes can view the recording via our SIM online learning portal. All lessons are recorded. For the May 2021 intake, we will be having online lesson for the Graduate Diploma in Human Resource Management and digital marketing program, but it will be blended 
for business analytic programs because one of the modules we will be conducting with some face-to-face -face component while the other modules will be totally online. Do you have any questions about the structure or about the programs? You can either type in the chat or ask during the Q&A session. Okay, I'm now introducing Ms. Isabel, the Head of Program for the Graduate Diploma in Human Resource Management. Isabel, please. Hi everybody, um, welcome, welcome to our online uh, graduate fair. Um, so I'm the, I'm Isabel, Head of uh, Graduate Diploma in Human Resources Management. So uh, I'm sure you are uh, excited about learning more about HRM, whether you are currently in human resources or thinking about joining the HR professionals. So uh, as you can see on our slides now, uh, we have six modules that you need to complete for this graduate diploma over the period of 12 months and uh, over the tri three trimester that we have. So in January, uh, we are looking at managing organizational change and development, as well as employment relations and law. In the past, we usually have the modules designed such that one of them is a 100% continuous assessment, while the other one is an exam module. Uh, but in 2020, we actually have converted with permission from our ACAD board, uh, the exam module into a continuous assessment too. So, but slowly when we go back to uh, normalcy, we will likely have this pairing of a continuous assessment with an exam module. So as you are seeing it, that's what the standard offering is. So uh, in May, in May term, we are looking at performance management and rewards, followed by international human resources management. Uh, and to wrap up the program, we have strategic human resources management, as well as staffing and employee development. You will see that uh, this, mod, uh, this program actually will give you a lot of insights into managing human resources within an organization, uh, as well as how to position human resource as a strategic partner to the business. We are also looking at international human resources because knowing how volatile the market is and how small our global workforce is connected by our high-speed internet these days. So we will, teach, uh, we will teach mobility issues in human resources, we will also teach cultural diversity and how do we actually uh, synergize the diversity in many of our MNE or even SMEs. Or if you are actually looking at HRM to just sharpen your own employability, preparing you for a global uh, opportunity, whether Singapore or overseas, then IHRM is indeed a good uh, program uh, for you to learn more about your role as a human resources uh, professional as well as sharpen yourself in terms of your employability. So um, if you are from a general uh, admin role, definitely this will this certif this graduate certificate or uh, sorry for, for me it is the graduate diploma in human resources management it will actually prepare you for a managing role in human resources if that is what you are looking forward to uh, in your career progression, right? So next slide, thank you. So in our year, we usually invite industry experts to come speak with our students. Here, um, we have actually Mr. Regina Wee is with one of our government agency and he has uh, come to speak with our students to bring industry best practices. So we actually invite a number of uh, experts in different specialization with this, within human resources management practice. So this is uh, how we actually connect our graduate students to meet with more industry experts because um, aside to book knowledge, the industry networking is an asset while you are with us during this program. Thank you, Clara. We can move on to the next slide. So 
Um, Skills Future Study Award, like Clara did mention earlier when you saw uh, our alumni, Derek Tan, he's actually one of the receiver for Skills Future Study Award for Human Resources. Okay, so definitely if you are looking at subsidies, uh, sorry, I, I was, uh, I take that back. If you're looking forward to some kind of financial uh, support, it can come in the form of this study award. Okay, if you choose to, to do SIM GDHRM. Okay, and our, our class size currently, uh, we are actually, I want to say a very small class size where we actually provide a lot of uh, opportunity for our students to interact with our teachers or our lecturers who have lots of experience in human resources. So a very boutique class size currently that's what we have. So, um, and starting, I think in May class, we are still looking at online, but we are slowly but steadily moving to uh, back to normalcy. Again, we will have a blended arrangement to come. So some face-to-face, -face, some online, but in May, it will still be online for GDHRM. Okay, so here again, we have another of our graduate. So Mr. Sia, uh, he's our very recent graduate. He's a human resources business partner with Austin Maritime Services. Okay, and so uh, definitely he has chosen to uh, be part of our program because of the reputation that SIM has to offer in management training, our experience in running a rigorous program to enhance the employability and the capability and the networking opportunity for our students, right? So, and he also mentioned that the timing and schedule is suitable for him. So because I, we are aware that all of you are actually working adults. So our program runs in the evening, seven to uh, 10 p.m. So, uh, and because we actually have students who feedback that the online program kind of sits in well with their busy work schedule, so I'm not sure if you prefer face-to-face -face or online, but please uh, use the chat to let us know as a working adult, how we can customize our program to better serve you, all right? So uh, our graduate said that this program provided him with greater understanding and an all-rounded program, especially on international HR and reward management module. So I hope uh, this few slides have kind of give you a clearer idea what you will get from joining us in this GDHRM program. But if you have any other questions, please feel uh, free to put it in the chat or come in with your voice later on when Clara opened the mic for you. Clara, do we have another slide? Okay, so next uh, I will hand the mic over to my dear colleague, Mr. Lanstan. Hi, uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you for joining us this afternoon. My name is Lance and I'm the head of program for uh, GD, GDBA and GDDM. Okay, I'm just going to use acronyms because it's quite a mouthful to keep repeating the same thing. Uh, so, okay, maybe let me share something first. Um, Claire, can I? Yeah, thank you. Okay, so I hope you can see the... Um, the um, report by Straits Times. So this was ran on the Straits Times uh, last year in March. And it says that um, many em employees are actually stressed when dealing with, with um, uh, numbers, with data, right? And uh, they, they, they really feel that they are kind of like um, very anxious about that. And a total of 40% of those respondents actually don't want to do anything with uh, data. So they will, they will do whatever they can to avoid data. But as we know, we can't keep doing that. Um, uh, data is playing a very big role in our organization right now. And especially when we talk about COVID, right? We can't uh, get away with it. Um, okay, so I'll just go back to the, the other one. All right, uh, Clara, could you put, a, put that back? So sorry for the moving here and there, but I thought that was interesting because it is it is like what people are actually saying. 
these workers are actually very concerned uh, with working with data. And uh, to avoid that, they are actually coming for causes. And these are the causes that SIM provides as well. So uh, in, in this, what I'm going to um, kind of share with you are uh, sort of three programs, but actually they have got a common denominator, which is the uh, graduate cert for business analytics. So over here, at the, there are three columns. Of course, there's intake. Uh, we have three uh, intakes a year for, for these programs. So you can either come in in Jan, in May, or in September, right? So we're actually looking at May as an in next in intake. Um, so there are three programs, as, as I've said, uh, GCB, GCBA, the grad cert, is actually a common denominator among the three. So um, if you can see my uh, mouse, I'm not very sure. So um, GCBA is this one. Oh yeah, okay, thank you. So in, in, uh, uh, it offers customer relations management. Uh, and then it has got uh, business analytics concepts, principles, and applications. And then in SEP, it is data mining for managers, right? So this is like a, a common module, uh, all three programs go through. But overlay with it, if you are taking GDBA, Graduate uh, Diploma in Business Analytics, you would take uh, data visualization as another uh, module. So for example, you come in on Monday to do CRM for GCBA and Wednesday for data analytics, sorry, data visualization. And if you are taking digital marketing, you will do on Monday uh, the G, uh, CRM and then social media marketing on Thursday. So for example, it's like that. So that's why all our, these three programs, you are able to complete it within a year. So for example, if you take GCBA, you only have one module per week for the year. But if you do GDBA or GDDM, you come to school twice a week, or you have two modules or two classes in a week. Okay, so that's, that's uh, if you uh, would like to, uh, you can choose to just do once a week or you can do twice a week and you can choose either uh, business analytics or digital marketing. All right, so I hope it's, it's clear, um, but we can talk about it uh, later on as well. Um, okay, I'll, I'll just go on more with um, the details for um, the GDBA program. Um, so as you can see below, we have got um, the colorful kind of a um, uh, cells below. So G, G, sorry, business analytics concepts, principles and applications, right? Uh, it uses a lot on Excel. Uh, the whole idea of is pro to provide you guys with a, a suite of uh, software that you can uh, be introduced to, uh, expose you to different software. And for Python, uh, of course, we use Python software. And then uh, Jupyter Notebook, sorry. And then for uh, data mining, we use Excel. Uh, predictive modeling, we are, we're going to use R programming. And CRM, again, R programming. And data visualization, we are using uh, Tableau. So in this case, uh, our students have, uh, will be kind of exposed to all these uh, three of, uh, all these softwares. Um, okay, next slide. Oh, right, these, the, these are the exams. Um, I think um, for the GDBA program, uh, all our, uh, Clara, maybe we just go back to the previous one. Okay, for the GDBA program, um, all, all except for the red color uh, letters, uh, that means in May, uh, it is exam, exam module. The rest are non-examinable or it, it's 100% continual assessment. Okay, uh, in May, we are doing um, uh, the business analytics concepts, principles and application. This is the best time to jump in because uh, this is kind of like the foundation it goes through a lot of uh, concepts which will help you uh, to, to learn um, the, other, the other modules. So uh, this is a rolling intake. So you can come in May. You could also come in September or you can come in January. So what I'm saying is that May is the best time to join because it really gives you a lot more uh, foundation uh, if you're joining it this time. Okay. Um, all right, so I'll not cover very much on the exams. Uh, it is, it's, 
quite similar to what uh, Isabel has covered before. These are one of these are one of the uh, our our students or graduates. Is that correct, Tan? Uh, I think he appreciate this course very much because it gives him a lot of exposure to the different softwares, and it, it's really very wide. Uh, open his his uh, horizon towards data. Uh, next one, uh, Max. Yeah, Max is uh, very happy with the program because it, it kind of expanded his horizon, right? And he's able to, to uh, use data uh, better, right? So this is what I have to share. Uh, maybe we can uh, do the Q&A and more questions can come in. Thank you. I, I have already unmuted everyone. So if you have any question, you can actually just ask us. But if you want to uh, type in the chat, you can also do so. I will bring it up for discussion. Any question from anyone? Maybe I just share some of the student profile. Actually, for the GDHRM, um, we have about 60% of students actually come from the HR background. They may not be HR practitioner, but they will be doing part of the HR job, like uh, recruitment or talent management. Yeah, so they want to know more about the HR in different areas as well. So they join our HR program. Another 40% is some of them are admin staff. Some of them actually, um, is we also got educator, or we also got an uh, engineer that would want to understand more about the HR so that they can uh, come up with a HR system. So actually, they come from all walks of life. Uh, for the GDPA, yeah, right now we are running the graduate certificate in business and ethics and graduate diploma in business and ethics. So for these, uh, these two programs, actually, our student population is about 30 odd right now. Yeah, so they all come from different backgrounds. Yeah, because I think now business analytics, it will be applied in be it banking, be it logistic, or any industry who also need to use it. Yeah, so that's why we see our students actually come from different areas and different company backgrounds. Yeah. Um, any questions for us? Perhaps I'll just share uh, what are the uh, common questions the, the students might have. Thanks. Okay, so um, the usual questions that we receive from the students are, are there any prerequisites to come into our programs, uh, especially for like um, the GDBA programs, right? Um, so there, there is no um, uh, hard prerequisites except like you have to have a, uh, to be proficient in English. Uh, basic knowledge of uh, Excel Right and uh, do not be afraid of uh, PC your I, or your IT. Right, so I think we all use our our Microsoft Office in the office. So I think that that is this all right. Uh, but if you are thinking about uh, do you need math and do you need stats, right? I think this will be added advantage. Uh, if you have got uh, math and stats background, that will be useful because it's easier to understand. But it's not a prerequisite because we do have our lecturers will, will go um, kind of like give you some basics. But in terms of understanding, uh, I think math and stats will be will be event, um, advantages. Yeah. Um, well, perhaps one of the common questions that students are, are mindful about is how rigorous are the assessments? So I just want to mention that actually, if we do go back to uh, for GDHRM, if we do go back to normalcy and uh, we are back in class, we do have group as assignments so that there is an opportunity to work in group setting and there'll be uh, more cross learning between members of the group. But otherwise, uh, if we are still doing online classes, then one of the component of the assessment is the individual assignment. And again, that assignment will 
enable our students to explore deeper into their understanding of human resources practices. So um, nevertheless, not to worry, for working adults, your own experience in a work setting, your experiences with your own human resources department, if you are already in it, or if you are uh, even an entrepreneur or business person managing your own team, all these are actually very relevant experience and will contribute to your, uh, your work within this graduate diploma, uh, our GDHRM. And not, we are here to learn as working adults and exchange best practices and to keep you abreast of development. Okay, then I'll, I'll carry on, I'll take over. Um, in terms of GDBA programs, uh, would it be face-to-face -face or online? Uh, as I've mentioned to you earlier on, we do have a number of programs, a number of modules that um, would use a lot of uh, hands-on, uh, especially like uh, we, we talk about um, R programming, uh, Python. Um, okay, Excel-wise, I think it is not, not that um, critical, uh, maybe a Tableau. So when, whenever we have got um, uh, software, we would uh, actually um, have more or even all face-to-face uh, -face classes. That means you, you come back to, uh, to campus. Uh, this is because uh, students have felt back and say that, okay, um, in terms of programming, right, I will need more hand-holding um, and it is much easier to communicate in person uh, rather than, you know, over, um, online. Sometimes when a person asks a question, it, it will disrupt the class and then there'll be some questions that will not be asked. Right. So in terms of face-to-face, -face, you're able to ask your friends, you're able to ask the lecturer. So that would be um, advantages for the students. So for those uh, modules with uh, uh, software or hands-on hands sessions, uh, we would uh, likely to have face-to-face um, -face classes, uh, either a portion of it or all of it. For those uh, modules that are mostly um, theoretical, uh, we will have it online. So that, that's the preference by, by the students. Okay. Um, and the, the uh, profile of the students in the, the GDBA program, uh, usually they are managers, supervisors, executives, and, and professionals already working uh, with some form of data. Right. So they are they're, they're not wanting to be um, a coder or a programmer. Uh, likely, likelihood is they want to be able to interpret data or when they receive some reports, they want to be able to uh, tell the programmers or those who are preparing the report uh, how to improve it. So if they do not know how it is done, uh, it will be very difficult to communicate. So in, in a program, we do teach the students how to do those, like for example, how to use Python, how to use R. Uh, but um, at the end of the programs, they will not be... Uh, data scientists or, or programmers, but they will be more proficient. Uh, even though they are taught how to do it, uh, likelihood after the program, they will still need a lot of help to do the uh, actual program. So uh, don't be too worried that you know, it's going to be a very, very um, a deep kind of a course that you, you, you got to be already, must be already very good in IT, uh, not, quite like, not quite like that, uh, but be ready to uh, think in a different way uh, to, to get down to, to working with your, with your hands as in like to, to type and code. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very different process, a different exercise uh, of the mind. Okay. Um, yeah. Anyone else? Any questions, Kate Min? Uh, not from the platform. Actually, for all the participants, I have already unmuted you. If you have any questions, you can just ask us. Yeah. I think the briefing has been very clear and I think uh, thank you our speakers for being so concise and so clear on the programs, the structure and the fees. That's why maybe majority of our participants uh, do not have much questions. <laughs> if let's say there are no further, we 
we'll give them maybe some five to 10 minutes to think about it. Maybe they are still registering and digesting the programs. Uh, if let's say there's any further questions, we'll answer them. But if not, uh, we'll see how in 10 minutes time. Sure. Just a random question. Can I have a hands up or smiley face if you are interested in the GD HLM program? Okay. Thank you for the. Uh, looks like it is from Sim Global. <laughs> Thank you for the support, Simba. <laughs> but um, well, I mean, if you are still thinking about it, of course, it's something that uh, you you will want to think about for a while more. But um, yeah, feel free to come in with your questions if we can help you to understand better either the GDHRM or the uh, GDPA program or the uh, even digital media marketing. Because uh, we are here for you, no charge for consultancy services. We just want to help you uh, gain more knowledge to future-proof your career. So that's the reason why we are here with you. So please feel free to type in your questions. Maybe we have to ask the same question. Perhaps everyone here is uh, not for graduate uh, diploma in human resources management, but for Lancer's program. <laughs> any, any thumbs up? <laughs> Smiley face? Inquisitive mind? <laughs> Clara, would that be a um, hotline or a support at email address that they will type to if they have further questions after this meeting with us. Okay. Uh, we are still having the program booth. So if you're interested in any graduate diploma program, you can still contact us. Or otherwise, you can just call our hotline, our uh, recruitment, or email us at study.sim.edu.sg for more information. Yeah. Maybe I can share this uh, slide. Um, yes, please. <laughs> to fill the time. No, mm -hmm. actually. So I, I, I think uh, being adults, right, sometimes we are really well concerned with uh, spending time with the family. Uh, so especially during the school holidays. So this is what I prepared uh, for another meeting. Um, our GD programs, I, it, it will apply to HR, I'm sure, uh, is broken to broken into three trimester. So trimester one uh, is, uh, it starts in January. All right, so it's going to be about 12, 13 weeks with then, then uh, uh, four weeks of exam, pro exam and exam processing and followed by the second trimester in May, uh, similar uh, uh, time. And then the final trimester is going to be in uh, September, uh, right? So the question is, would my December holiday be affected? So good thing uh, the four weeks or the three to four weeks uh, would be okay for those who are still thinking to spend time with the family uh, in December. Okay, so I hope this, this slide will somewhat give uh, assurance to the, the parents if you 
you will take on this program, you will still have some, at least some December uh, holiday time with your, with your family. Yeah. So if you have any questions, even on the schedule wise, we can advise you right now. Okay, uh, Francis actually asked, uh, what is the duration of the program? So for all our program actually is a one year program. So for graduate cert, although you are doing three modules, it will still be a one year program. The candidature actually is a two years. So if you want to, let's say you are taking the GDPA, Graduate Diploma in Business Analytics, but you don't want to commit yourself for two modules in a term, you can actually take one modules um, in every trimester, then drag it to two years. Yeah, so it can be done as well. Actually, some of our students are doing this. Yeah, especially doing this uh, COVID-19 time. Yeah. But let's say if you have other reason, like, okay, one of my previous students actually doing the GDHRM course, she was pregnant, then she asked for a leave of absence for half a year. So for this kind of case, of course, they may hit the candidature of two years. For this kind of cases, actually, we will normally get um, approval from our academic board to extend the candidature for students as well. Yeah, so you can just discuss with us your plan that we can assist uh, accordingly. Uh, okay, for those that join us late, not to worry. Um, there is this session will be actually is recorded and it actually will be uploaded to our official SIMG YouTube channel, where you can actually view this uh view this video again and go through this uh program briefing. Should there be anything, yeah, it, the access link will be sent to all participants who have registered for our event, uh, in around two to three weeks time. Thank you, Ash. Well, if there is anyone who just joined us but um, would like to ask questions, please feel free to. Will our participant be directed to another talk after this? Uh, there will be talks ongoing from now all the way actually till 5 p.m. with our various university partners as well as the various programs. So it's actually all in the portal that they can actually see. So uh, y'all can actually navigate around the portal and then just explore and see the webinar sessions. All webinar sessions should y'all maybe just only come in now and join us at this timing for this Saturday afternoon. Actually, all sessions before are recorded as mentioned and will be uploaded to our YouTube channel in around two to three weeks' time. And the access link will be sent to all participants. Okay, if um, the participants got no more questions for us, maybe we will just end the session here, but you can still join our program booth mm -hmm. or ask us any questions Yeah, in our program booth, yeah, online chat, or maybe if you want to join other webinar session you can join and then 
If you have any questions, just ask us afterwards. I think the pro prospects and participants have no part further questions, really. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us for this Saturday afternoon. Uh, thank you, Isabel. Thank you, Clara. Thank you, Lens, for joining us this afternoon and giving us such an insightful presentation.